legends welcome back to another video i got a lot of questions from a lot of new gamers asking you about like what they should do on storm point and you know how to navigate the map and it is a new map that all of us are learning right now so for those of you that are still learning the game and want to try and improve your skills a little map knowledge that i'm going to provide in this video could go a long way to help you get that edge that you might need to you know just like win your battles or at least place higher in your games so we'll discuss some drop points, navigating this map, including places to avoid, good characters for the map, and then finally the introduction of monster dents and if they're useful or not. Alright, so let's start with the hot and cold drop points. From the past week, I've played quite a bit and I've watched quite a bit, so I have a general idea of these good and bad places to drop. If you're looking to get right into the action though, checkpoint, barometer, and command center are the top three places to land. They have great initial fights, they're hella fun, the loot is good, so you're bound to have a great hot drop experience on any of these three spots. So let's take a closer look at these three. For Barometer, a good spot to land is close to the inland. The buildings here have okay loot, but it's more so the positioning that helps you a ton. You have some space from the other loot spots, so if anyone pushes you, you can see them, and you're right in between the two other hot loot spots. So if there's any teams that are fighting each other in there, you can most likely third party them. Most likely you'll always find that one to two teams drop on the southeast tower of barometer, and then one usually goes for the direct middle. So there's bound to be some teams engaging in between before they even think about pushing you. Usually in that case, you can't third party and push up from either side. Checkpoint. Now checkpoint has multiple layers. It's a really tall structure with a few houses below. The loot above is good for two teams, the loot below is good for one team. Most people tend to forget that the loot pills on the far ends, right and left side, those are the ones that people forget. So there's quite a few pills on both sides, so if you're dropping down on one side, make sure you hit those pills. There's a couple of good loot that you can pick up there before you engage. Oh, I forgot to put the disclaimer before this, but this only applies to teams below Diamond. After that, everyone has a good sense of the game and the map and awareness, so it's going to be different. On checkpoint, most of the battles happen in the middle area or they push one building. So that'll really depend on like, you know, where all the teams drop. If more teams drop on the west side or the east side and where they go and whoever pushes first. Dropping below is another strat. If you see two or more teams going on top and they're spreading out, maybe you might want to jump below, grab the loot below and then take the zip line from the north or the south side up. My suggestion would be the south side because you do take the zip line into a safer area. But that being said, if you do see enemies or shooting going on above, maybe you can take the north zip line to kind of get, get around them. The safest way though is on the right or the left side. There are stairwells on the far ends. It takes a little bit to flank around, so you might be late to the party if you do this. But if you, you go to the sides, you are a lot safer. Nobody's going to be expecting you to come up from behind them. Finally, Command Center is a super fun one. Now when you drop here, there's a big hole on the roof that goes all the way down to the loot area. This one can be kind of chaotic, so if more than one team drops, it's going to be a fight to the battle to get the loot first. But a big tip that I'll let you guys know here is that if you go down normally and do the slow booster animation to the ground, you will most likely be late to the loot. You're going to miss out. So a quicker way to get down the hole is to kind of just knock yourself over the edge right at the top of the hole. That way you'll fall down as if you were jumping off a cliff. Now the fall speed is faster just because you avoid that booster slowing animation landing. Once you're in there though, your goal should be to move east as much as possible. Command center has a few rooms and areas to loot on the left side, but the more loot is on the right side, the east side of the, uh, the building. So there's more pills in the center area there. But the key thing is the part at the very end of the command center. There is an escape room. Now, if you don't get the best loot, you know, or you battle it out, you're taking quite a bit of damage. If you are close to that room, there are zip lines that you can take all the way to the top. And there's a bunch of extra loot and a graph cannon to get you out of that situation. You can also camp the zip lines as well if you want, you know, just to stop teams from coming up and you can let your team heal. Alternatively, entirely of the inside, you can land on the outside. There's a bunch of loot on the outside. There's enough for one team to usually get weapons and make a push. Your goal if you land outside though is to third party. Most of the games, especially in pubs, you'll have two or three teams dropping inside. So make sure you wait till you hear the gunfight so then you can start to push inside third party and get your loot. So those are the three big hotspots and how to navigate those hotspots. 
Now, I do want to show you guys a really neat spot here. The northwest side of the Sinote Caves, there is a den, but it also has a bunch of loot that includes really good armor. The armor is almost guaranteed spawn. I've always found like a blue or even some purples at the number of times that I've dropped there. There is a spider den all around it, so it's excellent to just level up a little bit of shields and get some extra armor that you'll need to engage in a fight. Now, of course, the downside is that it is all the way on the west side of the map, so you won't be engaging in like hot drops or early game fights. But you know, if your aim is to win the game, this is excellent to get some good loot and then get yourself to the ring. Get yourself in a good position while the other teams are still fighting each other in early game. Just a reminder, I will touch on the dens in a little bit more detail later on in this video. We'll discuss what you get out of the dens, whether they're worth it, and at what time in the game that you should be using these. Now, there are quite a few other good spots to drop on the map. You know, as usual with Apex, if it's marked with a name on the map, it's probably got some decent loot, but there are tiers of loot as well. The North Pad and the Launch Pad, both great for loot, good amount of loot for, for an entire team. It's really nice actually as well because they have three walkways that your teammates can just like split off and you can each take a walkway and you get a decent amount of loot to engage in a fight. Speaking of the pads though, there is a great spot just on the northeast side of the launch pad. There are two buildings there but they have a bunch of loot because they have multi-story rooms. And the good thing is that there's four monster dens around them as well. So if you want to take it slow and loot up and level up your shields before uh, going to engage in a fight, this is a great spot to land early. If you do land here, most likely what you want to do is rotate into launch pad. There's most likely going to be a team or two there that probably be battling it out. You get third party and get some extra loot, get some kills on the board. The one place I would avoid though is shipfall. Now while this does have a good amount of loot, the loot is really spread out. So I, would, I wouldn't waste your time landing here. It's really spread out. It's a little bit too much. You're definitely going to miss out on a lot of fights and a lot of uh, early game engagements by just looting shipfall. So that's about it for the drops guys. One tip I want to throw out here for any new gamers just before we move on to the next point. So not just for Storm Point but in Apex in general. Pick a spot to land and land there multiple times. Learn that area well. Where the loot spawns, where the rotations of that area is, how to win the initial battles. You'll improve just based on experience by landing on this spot multiple times and focusing on which buildings to prioritize. That'll build your confidence, get your aim a little bit better, right? And then get you to move on and survive longer on the map. Changing spots every game is very confusing and it won't help you focus on the mistakes you made in the previous game. You'll just be trying again to figure out where's the loot, where do I go, what do I do? And you're going to get third party or something like that. So pick a spot on the map learn it well and then you can start to branch out a little bit once your game gets a little bit better and you're you're getting more experience at staying alive all right now that you've dropped you got some loot maybe you killed the team let's discuss navigation this map is the biggest map of apex legends history and while sheet shields are present in the game moving quickly to stay in the zone is super key do not rely on those heat shields this map has a lot of verticality to it, and as history says according to Star Wars, the high ground is always better. Unless you're like some crazy diamond in up player, then you can defy this rule because you might be able to like take them, like you got some high skill. Anyway, so that's my biggest suggestion for you guys on this map. Wherever you go, try not to get stuck on the low ground. Compared to the other maps, the verticality of this map is much larger and it makes such a big difference. Traversing height on this map isn't as easy as the other maps or the older maps, even with the old mobility characters, which is why Ash is such a game changer on this map. Valk is also a really good choice because of Ralt, she can fly over some of the structures and mountains, which can help your team rotate. Definitely two good characters to use on this map to reposition since the skies aren't open everywhere you go on this map. Besides that, Pathfinder is excellent for the grapples. Octane could also be a little bit tough, but I think like even with the new introduction of the, what are they, the gravity lifts, those things are kind of like jump pads, but extended for crossing the map. Now, final character that's also really excellent for this map is Jibby. Now, compared to like, he's not movement character, like I just said, for the other characters, but if you have a movement character on your team, Jibby is excellent to bring. And the reason I say this is because a lot of the rings are ending in more open areas of the map. They're not ending in the very centers where there's like buildings or forests or trees. It's opening, it's ending on the sides. So having a Jibby shield can be super clutch, especially if you're trying to rotate or you're trying to just get into the zone and someone's trying to gatekeep you. You can use that Jibby shield to get to your positioning that you need to get to. So yeah, 
In terms of places to keep out for as you're rotating as the ring is closing, there are a lot of connection points between different parts of the map here, and these have a lot of loot, like a lot of loot. So while you're planning out your path to move, try to see if you can fit one of these like transition zones in. You can pick up a couple extra loot stuff. You never know, you might need a little bit of extra ammo. Now as the ring is closing, be aware of one particular spot on the map that I want to point out. This area is the heart of the map and it is a caged, sealed off area trapping a bunch of prowler monsters. Now particularly for you, this becomes a huge choke point and getting caught here can cost you the game. Also, the prowlers are also a big pain in the butt, but that's a side point. Locking teams inside or outside of this area is a tactical way to kill teams outside of the zone. When you and your teammates are gathering your loot, be sure to check the zone and make sure that if you need to pass through this area, go early. Loot can be found elsewhere on the map, but if you stay late and then you have to pass through this area and there is a team choking you, you are done. I myself have killed several teams rotating on the inside because you just hold the main door that everyone has to come through and all of a sudden the teams inside the cage have to like freak out they try to go to another door and like they go try to go to the second closest door they try to actually push you and it doesn't work because you have the only exit point that you have locked down so here is an example here take a look i downed a couple of few individuals on the other side and then this other team was running to the left here we engaged them in the trapped area and they we had the only door they, they had nowhere else to go so they were eliminated due to low health after a couple of damage shots from us so if you can avoid this spot go early get around it rotate if you want to try and choke people this is a great place to choke people but you have to get there early as i said so that's generally all the things that you gotta really be aware of for the map storm point Everything else kind of comes down to the regular apex tactical plays, picking the right battles, and you know, knowing when to disengage from a battle. So the final point that I want to talk about here is the introduction of monster dens. Now the dens either have spiders or prowlers that you can kill that'll drop specific loot for your team loadouts. They are called smart loot. It'll drop quite a bit of ammo, attachments, shields, and health. I've seen a couple people use grenades, kind of stack a couple of kills together so that you save some ammo. There are quite a few of each type of monster to kill. For spiders, there are eggs on the wall that you'll have to break and a few spiders pop out at a time. For prowlers, there's several waves that come out of their little like hidey den. So they'll come out and straight attack you. They're much more aggressive than the spiders. Once you have finished a den, a loud pulsing sound will alert you that you have completed the den and you'll get some crafting points that can be used at the crafting stations. Now, that wouldn't be entirely worth it, except for the fact that damaging monsters also gives you a percentage of evo shield as well. So yes, you can actually get and upgrade your shields from these dens depending at what point in the game you are and what color your shields are. Be aware though, of course, that it is Apex Legends, right? So the second you make noise, third parties are hunting you down. So clear the den and move as quickly as possible. In terms of the loot that you get, you actually do get quite a few level 3 attachments from these dens. I feel that they are worth it, especially early game. Towards end game, if you have less than half of the teams left, I would avoid these dens. Get your attachments from some dead bodies or kill another team, but don't bring more attention to yourself out in the open. Making noise to attack these uh, monsters, everyone's going to collapse it on you. When there's a couple teams left in the game, everybody's going to try and collapse it on you. So that's dens in a nutshell. Final thing I will mention here that since we just mentioned evo shields actually is that the craft you can actually upgrade your white evo shields instantly to blue at the cost of 50 points. So this is pretty easy to get near replicator so if you land near replicator and you couldn't find a blue shield go to the craft upgrade it's 100% worth to get those blue shields. And that's about it ladies and gentlemen just a couple things that i wanted to point out for those of you especially those of you that are new to the game Stormpoint is a wonderful map it's very complex in a good way which makes for some great plays if you've learned the map well let me know in the comments guys if you have any questions or if you want some extra tips or anything like that i'll be happy to address them other than that enjoy the game guys take care stay safe we'll see you out there in season 11